Hello guys, I'm Sammy from HackerBad.net, and today we're going to be talking about private game servers. What are they, how can you get one, and how does it relate to cheating in online games? So, first let's cover the basics. If you already are familiar with how clients and servers work, then I would recommend you skip this part. So, in any online application, including online games, you basically have two sides to the equation. On the one side is you sitting on your computer, or on your Xbox, or on your PlayStation, or whatever game console you're using. Um, this is called the client. This is basically the console or the computer, the PC that you're using to play the game. This is the client. You have a program installed on your platform that is called the game client. So since it is an online game that you're playing, the game client, then through the internet connects to the game server. Now the server is the second part that, to the game. This is usually in MMORPGs, for example, the place where the whole world is simulated and stored and all your game process and your money and your items and whatever um, your game may offer you is stored. Now, for cheaters and for other people, even uh, casual gamers, it might be very interesting to own their own server because if you're playing uh, through the normal developer, uh, the developer's official servers or the publisher's official servers for that matter, um, you're basically bound to their restrictions. You're bound to have the things that they implement into the game and you're bound to have as many as you have earned through usual normal game mechanics. Now, if you were to own this server or control it, you would obviously be able to give yourselves more stuff or even add new stuff into the game and so on. So, and that's basically what a private game server has the potential to do. However, not all private servers allow you to do this. Now, there have been a lot of servers private game servers for really popular games like World of Warcraft and other games. However, most of them are, well, not strictly speaking legal, as in, you know, it's legal to connect to them and play on them, but uh, the means by which they were made are not strictly speaking illegal. I'll do another video on the legality of private servers, but basically if you connect with a private server and you're not hosting it, you're usually alright, legally speaking. So yeah, you're only really in danger if you're um, competing with the original developer of a game by running that service or that server and uh, causing them to lose money, in which case they can sue you and they will most likely win. So yeah. Um, there's also another way of achieving private servers. The, the one way is basically to use the official software provided by the developers, either through less than legal means, uh, by, you know, copying their server data illegally, which is one thing that I believe has happened. Um, people hacking into the server, copying all the data, and basically building their own server from the data they recovered. Or in other cases like, very famously, uh, Minecraft, for example. Uh, Minecraft actually provides people, let me just show you, with their own server software, okay? They can set up their own servers. You can just download the software that you need to set up a Minecraft server. But uh, most games don't actually do that, all right? Now, an alternative to using the actual original software is to use an emulator, so to emulate a server. This is what a lot of fake cheating websites do in order to um, aim to show you pictures of the alleged cheat or hack, which doesn't really exist because it's a scam. Um, they will set up their own little fake servers in order to add stuff to their account, which they don't actually have. And then they can deliver you with, uh, they can deliver fake screenshots to you. However, this is the most difficult way of doing things because actually emulating the functionality of an actual game server to the point where a game is actually playable is almost impossible, especially in MMORPGs. There may be browser games where it's a little bit easier, but in MMORPGs um, with a persistent world and so on, it's almost impossible to emulate 
the game server for anything more than just changing a few numbers for some fake screenshots. But this is another thing that does happen. Um, usually the fake or the emulated server will be just, you know, a clean room and then you're able to spawn mobs in it and the mobs will have some very very basic I, I obviously not the original and so on but I don't want to get too deep into server emulation it's just another way that private servers can be made that as far as I know are strictly legal because you're not actually using the developers original code that you've stolen or whatever because you're coding your own server so to speak, to interact with the game client. Now, the legal stuff I'll go into, into an, in another video. Now, the thing is, and I, that I want to show you is that even though you might be able to own your own servers for games like Battlefield um, 4, which is an, a good example, or all these other um, games, these private servers that you can actually buy will not allow you, in most cases, to give yourself a god mode or so, uh, or something like that, along those lines. So they're not actually cheatable. You can't cheat on them, because most of these are ranked, so they will track your score and add them to your main account, which means they have certain restrictions. Um, well, as in the administrator cannot actually have root access to the server and, you know, change anything. For example, ammo or health or money or whatever it may be. So, in most shooters you can get these private servers and the administrator will basically have the rights to install certain plugins and so on and kick people from the server, stuff like that, add messages to the server where they can post their team speak and so on. Uh, but usually there is no way to actually use this for cheating or advanced modding purposes unless the mods are obviously sort of are, are accepted by the developers in which case this will be possible so don't think just because you buy yourself a battlefield server or whatever you're gonna get have a god mode in that game that's not really the case it's really just a case for the games where you are actually the host hosting your the server on your own computer where you have root access to the server and are able to change anything. Um, this is, for example, the case for Minecraft. You can really you can enable God mode. You can add your own custom mods and so on. You can basically do anything. All right. This may also be the case for games like DayZ or other kinds of zombie survival games. But yeah. It's not the case for most games. Yeah. And that's basically how these servers work. How to set up these servers, usually. It's a really simple process. In Minecraft, you basically just install this thing. And then you can connect to the server through your own IP address. Um, which, by the way, you may want to mask that IP address um, by getting a proxy IP that redirects people uh, because, you know, you don't want hackers and DDoSers to have your actual IP address because that's bad because they can DDoS you and that's not very nice. So, yeah, I would recommend doing that whenever you're running any kind of game server on your actual PC at home. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what private servers, game servers are, and yeah, if you want a private game server for your favorite MMORPG where you have unlimited gold and health and so on, it's probably not going to happen. I mean, it's very unlikely. Um, these are usually all illegal servers and get taken down sooner or later unless they're hosted somewhere in, I don't know, North Korea or somewhere, <laughs> something like that. And even then, it's really hard to keep them up, and they're also not getting updated, so, yeah, it's really hard. So, yeah, this is my video on how this stuff works. I'm going to get into um, some more of the legal stuff in another video. Thanks, you guys, for watching, and see you guys soon.